Good morning and happy new year. Tuesday the 3rd of January 2023. So I thought I would just take a little moment to have a look around the garden. I appreciate that you can't see my garden very well from the angle you're at. But as I walked up the path, I can see one single daffodil. I can see the pussy willow, pussy willow, catkins, the hanging down ones coming into bloom. And I did notice that we've got one purple-headed perpetual wall, Arisium, is that the name? And um, I feel slightly dangerous walking on the lawn today. We have had persistent rain over the last few days, as well as very windy nights. And my husband came out yesterday on a brief um, spell of dryness to mow the lawn, but it's still very wet underfoot. And he has taken the time, I can see, and I will appreciate this when um, we have a cup of tea together later today, to comment on his neatly um, defined edges. And then he cuts the, the border edges and I can see that he rolls the turf over and it sort of goes onto the flower bed to rot down. And the only things we've got standing out here are um, the hydrangea, which is shriveled and brown. I can see some new buds developing. The bed that had the dahlias and zinnias. I'm not sure whether the stems have collapsed there, whether they've been cut down. And certainly the peonies, which were here in the summer and had been deadheaded. And I think before Christmas they were quite tall. The stalks are quite tall, have now been cut down as well so things do change in the garden if you're able to join me live do let me know whether you're watching just checking in checking my mic is on so you can hear me loud and clear is it the first day back for school for you too or are you going back your children going back a little bit later so let me know in the comments it seems like quite an early start back here it's not even 12th night yet and on that subject did you watch the video I posted yesterday um, it's a little bit of a clean with me video slowly taking down my Christmas decorations I feel quite accomplished with what I got in the kit did in the kitchen um, took down some fairy lights but I also did a little bit of a deep clean and consequently, as I've been moving around the house, I have put all my flower arranging bits and bobs out on the patio table in front of me. So I now need to do a little bit of cleaning up with my flowers in the garden. So hello and welcome. Uh, what I will do, one last slurp of tea and you can see that Christmas is over because I've gone back to my blue and white transfer wear cap which was my charity shop find, and I believe that is from a Finnish pottery. So it's got a sort of look of spode, um, willow-esque pattern, and it has a really, really deep source, which I actually love, and I really like the shape of the cup too. It is quite a small cup though, with quite a large surface area, so my tea does go cold very quickly. So tidying up, I have got my composting buckets. Anything you see me apparently just chucking onto the floor, hopefully I am aiming it into the compost bucket and that then goes into our brown bin, which is collected by the council. I think it's once a month for the brown bins. And um, I will just bring you down a little bit. And this is what I have collected on my table and what needs clearing up. So there's all kinds of jobs here. The first thing I need to do is to find my scissors, cake tins. Next year, I'm going to make my Christmas cake in a loaf tin. Um, normally I make it round and this year I made a square one for us at home and I ended up cutting it in half because one of my flower friends very kindly offered to look after our dog over the Christmas period and she said she hadn't made a cake so I split the cake in two and we had half each and next year I think I might make my, my Christmas cake in my loaf tin. Now this um, 
uh, went to spend Christmas with my sister and last year, so Christmas 2021, I'd made some table arrangements for her and of course they were still living when I left her last Christmas but she had saved the tins for me which I'm rather pleased about and um, gave them back to me so I need to take them apart so taking off the sticky tape taking out the chicken wire and then I will wash that up and it'll all be ready to use for my next flower arrangement or I will line it with one of those um, what I've ended up doing is buying those grease proof paper liners when I bake my dad used to do that when he took over the cooking from my mum and he's got and in fact I have got them all their unused um, shaped cake liners so you don't have to be there forever cutting bits of grease proof paper to fill your tin so they are rather handy so let's tick that off as job number one done baking tins and chicken wire so what I'll probably do when I wash the baking tins I will swill boiling water over these just to kill off any bacteria that is hanging around so it's quite nice I don't know about you to be able to knock off you know to tick off some of your jobs just to feel like you've made a little bit of progress so the next thing I'm going to do really simple I made this table arrangement in a hurricane vase and it, I like to call it my boxing day arrangement because it's got all those the odds and ends left over from Christmas and I don't know whether you pull crackers at Christmas too but you know when you've had your dinner and you got all this detritus strewn across the table so this was my detritus but in a more organized flower arranging kind of way and you might remember this little twig tree that I showed you how to make on my Christmas series of um, lives from my garden and um, I made another one a Grinch tree with a bit of wine at the top and I was able to bend that over so I'm going to get rid of that I can just take the stem off that can go in there and I need to be a tiny bit careful here because I tied the tree together with a little bit of floristry wire so that can't go in my composting bin so I'm going to make another sort of rubbish bin up and I will have to put that in the bin in fact I shall put my tape in there too there are things I can keep so I'm going to keep my long pine cones I'm not quite sure where the other one jumped to there it is and my candle that'll be kept as well and then I did dry some clementines I bought a small plate crate of clementines you could never have too many at this time of the year and I was experimenting with drying my clementines in the microwave so I was going to make that into a YouTube video it never happened but I did post the clip in my free Facebook group Flower Start World so if you're not already a member I will leave a link to it in the notes underneath this video and then loads of these little woodland trees I can take the stem off throw the tree away and then right at the bottom of my vase I have got a little bit of moss taken from my garden and a little bit of wax so I recycled some candle wax last year um, mainly white candles these were some red candles I melted down and I did have it I filled a candle jar imagine this is my candle jar and I poured the red wax on top and it looked really attractive but when I lit the candle it just went straight the way through the red and it didn't burn properly and I was able to ping that off and I thought it made quite a nice decorative detail it's got this sort of rippled edge as if I've embossed something in it so I need to decide whether that's going to go in the bin or if it's going to be my pot from melting down again or whether I'm just going to keep it as something that was pretty and get rid of it later on in the year now ideally I will be uh, washing out my my vase my hurricane lamp but actually I'm going to use that for something else in a minute so I'm going to put that to one side and put my moss in my little bowl of uh, collected things <laughs> good morning Lisa I was wondering whether you'd be able to hear the birds tweeting away I'm filming underneath the pergola in the garden where the birds nest so it is always quite noisy down here which is a lovely noise isn't it and friends and I were discussing um, that we've been hearing birds really early in the morning and really late at night and my husband always says it's the blackbirds you can hear because they're the first up and the last to bed. 
So, um, but I think above me it is probably sparrows. And they, I hear from my husband, the wildlife expert, that they are already sussing out the bird boxes that we've got on the side of our wall. Now, do you recognise this arrangement? This is the arrangement I made, and I th yes, I think I did make it on a YouTube Live before Christmas. It sat in the middle of my dining table over the festive period. And again, if you watch the video that I posted yesterday, I showed you that it was really on its last legs. So what do I do? I could just throw it all in the bin, the compost bin. But what I'm going to do, I'm thinking, I do like to have something out on my patio table just to have a look at. So the table's constantly in use. If, I thought if I pull the little brown edges off the um, petals of the ornamental cabbages, I can just sort of rejuvenate it and make it look a little bit fresher. But what I will say is the roses have well and truly had it. And really, they've done me good service. Although I thought the roses and the cauliflowers were quite small when they came in my delivery of Freddie's flowers, they have lasted well. So these would have been delivered. When were they delivered? It was either the 23rd of December or it was the week before that. I think possibly it was the week before. So Friday the 23rd. So they came Friday the, gosh, math, 16th. Friday the 16th of December. So here we are on the 3rd of January. So they have lasted really well. There's a little bit of Lysianthus not looking too good either. But I thought from the casual glimpse, you know, I always do this, hold it a long way off, it still looks okay. And what I'll do when I put it on my patio table, when I've cleared off all the mess, is I'm going to make sure that I rotate the container like that, in order that when I'm looking from my kitchen window, that is what I see. So I see the, the area of interest, and you'll see as I turn it round, but it all looks nice overall. You can definitely see that that's where the roses were. It's a little bit blank now. But I will put it to good use. And then when it starts shattering and breaking and fall, you know, bits falling apart on the patio table, it will be the opportunity to put it all in the compost bin. Although I might save these little bits of silver birch twig that have been spray painted silver because I could use them another time. So let's move that over there. Now the other arrangement, I thought those flowers were old. You have to, you know, let's do the mental arithmetic. Are those flowers three weeks old? Can't quite think about it. If those flowers were three weeks old, these ones, I'm embarrassed to show you. These ones must be, this is an arrangement I made in the last week of flower class, my life classes in Canterbury with Kent Adult Education. So that would have been the first week in December. So these flowers are a, are a month, five weeks old. And to again, be honest, <laughs> I've had these in the, one of my little favourite placing flowers, which is in the corner of our living room behind the TV. And again, if I hold them quite far back, they just look in the, the dark corner they were in, like a little festive flower arrangement. But these were bedraggled before Christmas even started. So what I'm going to do is to take this apart. Now I can save some of these bits. These were the hydrangeas I picked and they were just, um, actually they probably did look the same as they do now. They were this is the last pickings off the hydrangea bush, which is now nothing but shriveled stalks. But they are lovely to keep, so I could either use those in another arrangement. I could spritz them a little bit with some spray paint, but I will definitely be keeping those. The other thing that I will be keeping will be my kangaroo paw. Oh, I've just broken that bit. Um, the anagosanthus. And again, that came in delivery of Freddie's flats. So if you live in England, um, and you want to get a regular delivery of flowers, I do have a discount code, which I think entitles you to your first box of flowers free. And can I remember it off by heart? Julie D, 3596, I think. But if you are interested in the discount code, leave me a comment and I will let you know what the code is. And I do have, if you want to search, several videos about Freddie's flowers. So I guess if you search on YouTube, Freddie's flowers, Julie Davis, it should come up. And then these bits I'm going to save. So these are my decorative Christmas picks. So I have cleared away, boxed away my Christmas decorations, but I do know that I have let my carrier bag of flower arranging Christmas bits is still open, lying on the spare bed, waiting for these picks, and then they'll be put up in the loft. So it's a quick tip for you. 
never seal up your boxes with your Christmas decorations until you're ready to go back in the loft with them because you will always find something that you have missed and it's such a faff when you have sealed boxes up to then keep unwrapping them and you know and and putting that one last thing back in and it was an arrangement with roses so again if you like roses you like dried roses or perhaps you've got a wedding coming up this year and you want to have some natural rose petal confetti well you just need to dry your flowers out and I didn't purposely dry my flowers out they have just dried in situ but they look gorgeous but I'm not going to keep those I've got at one time bags and bags of rose petal confetti which I never used and I just ended up throwing away so I am going to put everything that's there and Candace, I just all think it looks quite nice and aged oh and one of my Christmas presents this year I got a copy of Rake's Progress is it called Rake's Progress I think it is called Rake's Progress it's a magazine a really really sort of artist level florist floral art magazine and I had a feature on Rebecca Louise Law and she is a fine artist and florist and she is known for using dried flowers and it always reminds me of her when I think about putting these things in the bin in the compost heap that she saves them all and she, her installations are hanging flowers that hang down and I can remember going to the Garden Museum in London just across the road from Lambeth Palace and looking at one of her installations and it was really really beautiful but these were look at these it's like someone's been caught in a rainstorm so that was a one of these chrysanthemum blooms a really big sort of shaggy haired ones it would have been about that big originally and again if you like that kind of thing it is beautiful but it just clutters my house up and it's that fine line between is this an artistically dried flower or is this flower arrangement just dead and as it's Christmas, I'm going with it being just dead. So I'm just looking at my mechanics and reminding myself what I did here. It's arranged in um, chicken wire, but I've got one of my really big pin holders. Did you ever find a pin holder, um, Lisa? I know you were looking, I don't know if you can see it down there. So that's another thing I need to do is I need to take off the tape and then the bowl will need washing the chicken wire will need just a bit of you know boiling water treatment that's three bits of chicken wire and then I am left with the sort of you still got this sort of detritus at the bottom you can see how the bowl's discolored and because I fix the um, pin holder into the bottom of the container using my museum wax I just need to give it a sort of firm I think I need to get my knife down there just a firm knife and sort of flip it out so that does all need cleaning so another job ticked off I'm going to end up with a, a line of containers that I'm, I'm getting rid of so sample Christmas store wreath and the little stand that I was displaying it on looked lovely. I've never taken the price tag off. That came from um, the flower fest I went to in Belgium in September. And if you're interested in catching up on that, let me know and I will um, add the link to the comments. Um, and you can, you can find that. So I find that quite nice to use. Just another use for a dory. So dories don't even need, always need to be displayed vertically. You could display it horizontally and sits on the table so i did shop or from the wreath i made an ice lantern over the christmas time and had that really um heavy you know about a week of really prolonged sub-zero temperatures so it's looking a little bit the worse for the wear so again put my stand across one side because that needs to go back into my workshop and then i have got all these little fake bits and pieces so that will go into my bag of Christmas bits um, and what I would want to do then is to reuse my the the door wreath that I've got the frame so I've gone over this using wire which I should be able to just go through and cut it all out so again I need to be careful when I'm getting rid of all the materials I can't be putting the bits of wire 
in the compost bin. So that will take a little bit of time just to peel off the wire and then get rid of the greenery. So that again might be something that I need to put um, in the general waste bin. Depends how much time I've got in my inclination. So I think that's probably a job that I will need to do, you know, a hot cup of tea and then I can just start to take it all apart. So there's some bits that will just fall away and some bits that may well have more wires on it. So it's easy to do, but slightly, slightly dull. Well, the job I do want to get onto though, is looking after my spring flowering bulbs. Do you remember we planted these together? on Again, another YouTube live, I believe, on a, on a Tuesday morning. When would that have been? I don't quite remember. But six of these bulbs around the outside edge with the brand new bulbs this year. And then I was going through, trying to decide whether the bulbs I saved from last year were worth planting or, you know, would they come up again? And I've had a modicum of success. So what I need to do here is I need to water very dry so occasionally I have been watering the bulbs they've been in my workshop which is cool it's about 11 degrees in my workshop so now that Christmas is over all the sort of reds of Christmas have gone I'm going to bring these out and put those in my kitchen um, on my kitchen windowsill so I can start to enjoy those coming out into flower so again job done over there and I've also got some flowers that are fully in bloom. And these were gifted to me. We had some friends over before Christmas. And I'm absolutely certain that the little label on these said they were white hyacinths. And quite clearly they are not. And again, I thought I might keep them out on my patio table. I quite like the flowers as they're starting to come, you know, shoot up into bud. I'm not entirely sure that I like them when they're, I find them a bit blousy, a bit too, too much, but I think they're going to look lovely on my patio table with the white cabbages that I've got. And I um, just need to keep that moist. So that's going to reappear later on outside. And talking about patio tables and keeping things, I've still got my jar So Lisa, you're saying you haven't got your pin holder yet. If, next time I see you, Lisa, I will see whether I can dig one out of my cupboard for you. So I've had these flowers on my patio table for a little while. Well, since the Christmas period, I can't quite decide whether to keep them on the table. And it's, it's the redness. Here I am wearing my red check scarf. Um, whether we associate you know, red with Christmas, don't we? Is it okay to have red stuff around after Christmas? And I'm not quite sure. So there's probably I need to refresh that water in there. But you know, holly, which is so obviously a Christmas greenery, isn't it? Do we still want to be using holly right into the new year? But part of the reason I don't want to get rid of it straight away, but that was the last of the holly stem that I got from our um, street market in town. And if you remember, I used some of this holly to um, add it into my door wreath I got, got on my front door. And again, if you want to have a look at that video, I actually hot glued this into my door wreath. So if you want to find out more about that, I will uh, let me know in the comments and I will make sure I put a link to the video so you can have a little watch of that. And then, and to be honest, I'm really amazed that this eucalyptus has lasted. Eucalyptus quite often dries out and can be a little bit disappointing. And again, this was the bunch that I bought, would it have been the first week in December from the street market? And it has lasted really well. Um, and I've spent the whole time trying to disguise the fact that it's in that stubby end. And I'm going to throw that in the bin because there's not much left in the in in terms of stems now and I, I'm, I was trying to disguise that last you know that stubby bit so I want to sort of you know make use of what I've got but not you know I want it to look pleasing so I've hidden that little stubby bit for long enough and then a little bit of good flower arranging health care to make sure that any leaves aren't going to be sitting in the water so just freshening things up a little bit so if I've got a tiny bit of red, keep putting these bits of holly in. 
because of course it's in season I just, we associate holly so much with christmas so not to forget that it's still winter so christmas may well be over just got one bit of eucalyptus that just just passed its best so again trying to curate what i've got but that looks rather fine and dandy doesn't it for my collection on the, the patio table of course I've got reds of Christmas and then the pinks of spring all together so I'll have to decide how to to put that all together now the next thing to do a little bit more of housekeeping did you notice the candelabra in yesterday's video I I've set this up it's a bit strange it's a five-pointed candelabra but I've covered the central area in moss and that would have been well, I think possibly in my DIY wedding flowers group, we were talking about making arrangements on candelabras. And again, this has probably been stuck on here for a good year or so. So it's time to ring the changes a little bit. So this is a ball that was covered in string, so I can just cut all that away. The string will fall off. And then the only thing I need to do is hope I can remember where I put the candle cups to keep them safe so it looks much more elegant now and again winter season I could actually put candles in this and have a bit of candlelight sort of cheer us through these dark winter months so I love the winter months I love every season of the year and I think the trick is is to embrace it and find what you like about it instead of discounting a quarter of the year because it's dark and horrible and you don't like it and you're waiting for the sunshine to come is don't wish your life away so what I've started doing practice I've probably started doing since lockdown a little bit before lockdown is I quite like you know you have to get up in the morning I've got a you know a family that needs getting off to school and I quite like now setting my alarm getting up the same time every day and I come downstairs and I have a candle on the windowsill and it's dark when I get up and I make a cup of tea and the house is quiet nobody comes down for about half an hour and it's just a nice little bit of quietness and although I may spend the time on my phone you know catching up with my social media and my emails and the newspaper headlines it is a nice quiet time and that's why I like winter season and I know it's winter now I won't be doing that in the height of summer so it's I like marking the fact that our seasons are different and we do different things at different times of the year so here we are I've because this is tied on with string a string goes right the way through to the heart of the moss if I was being really fastidious look could I save the string you know perhaps I should be you know we have got a cost of living crisis you know how many bouquets would that wrap up it would be easy just to chuck that in the bin but as i wrap it up you know the moss will fall off and i've got a piece of string for gift wrapping wrapping flowers and just for whatever purpose you need a little bit of string so i can put that back in my workshop I'm feeling really lazy I'll chuck it in that kitchen drawer that we've all got with all those useful bits and bobs quite a sizable bit of string there and I think you know do I just throw this bits of it's sphagnum moss which is left over from door wreath making probably a couple of years ago I'm kind of going to hold on to it because I've got a plan although I will say these tiny little bits that haven't held together I am going to put into the bin because I've got something to show you. Let's see if I can bring the camera down a little bit lower. Those bulbs that I had growing, I have had only a modicum of success. So I'm going to move these out of the way. Move that out of the way. That's going to be a job for later on today. So I wasn't sure whether all these bulbs were going to take and I've got some leggy growth which I reckon is my um, paper white narcissi. So a bit leggy there. And then I've got bowls here where you know nothing's grown in it and I was quite 
um, I, I kind of knew that some of them weren't going to take because I could tell by the, as I planted them, they were a bit squishy, squashy. So the plan is, what can I take out of these bowls and make something out of? Now, the one thing I'm going to do, a tip from my father, not, I've got a bar of soap here. Um, yes, I will have to clean my hands later on, but it's that horrible bit that you get of the dirt under your nails. And his advice was to rub your fingernails across your bar of soap before you start, and it makes it easier when you come to clean your hands. So I'm going to go back, imagine that I've washed my hurricane vase, and then I'm going to decant particularly the taller pieces of... Um, what I think of a paper white narcissi so oh look at that so again this is a baking tin a bunt tin from the charity shop and look at all that lovely root growth isn't that gorgeous so I am going to pull this apart and plant them in my glass bowl so part of the reason for this is it's a bit trendy having having your bulbs in glassware but also with that leggy growth it will help support the um the leaves and the flowers as they come up and then i've got um hyacinths. these ones are hyacinths and then here that is a hyacinth it's, it's got some root growth but it's it's just not coming to anything. So I am going, and another one there. So they're going to go straight into the compost bin. And another one there. So it's three hyacinth bulbs. It didn't come to anything. But I have still got some compost. I'm going to get rid of that just yet. So let's try the next one. Another little bulb here. Another little charity shop fine. Oh, I feel just like Monty Don showing you my root growth here. So another paper white there. And I think that must be a pay. I think, I think I'm not sure what those are. They, they're either going to be um, snow. No, I reckon my money would be on um, mascari, the grape hyacinth. So I'm going to go paper white. And just so I'm trying to separate them out because I'll do something with those later. On. and then here where it wasn't successful at all what have I got here so that I think that's another paper white I'm trying to sort of um, recognize it now from oh, but those ones aren't they're tiny that must be yeah from the shape of the bulbs they're sort of like daffodil bulbs but a bit a bit squashed so I'm going to put those down in there, like that, and then I've got duff ones, so that they can just go in the compost heap. And then just one more out of my silver um, sugar bowl here. Oh look, this tiny, these absolutely tiny bulbs are having little babies, they're just absolutely tiny. I think they might be grape hyacinths as well. And I think that is a paper white bulb. So it's like a daffodil bulb, but it just seems to be slightly elongated. So I've got those in there. I'm going to dribble the tiniest amount of water using my very trendy teapot. We've got um, a one cup kettle where you fill the kettle up with water and then you press the die as to how big your cup is. And I've been using my charity pot, charity shop find, my tea lara. I paid, I think, not more than uh, less than three pounds three pounds and less and online these are 27 pounds i was really thrilled to get that so i've got those in the pot and then i'm going to go back do you remember that little bit of moss i picked from the garden if i put that down i can sort of take out the woody bits it'll sort of disguise i might break that in half i can then put that down inside my pot to cover up the sort of slightly bits of the bulbs but I haven't really got any soil in here and when you're growing your bulbs indoors they don't really need any you know have you done that thing when you're as a child and you take a hyacinth bulb and put it over a pot of water and you can see the roots grow down so hopefully they have got a good start in life 
and they all look slightly more decorative. I'm getting caught up on my scarf there. Like that. So just slightly more decorative. And then what am I going to do with the other bulbs? So I've got, I'm going to keep those like that. I'm going to keep those like that. Um, but I have got a few extras and what I'm going to do is put them in one pot I think so my little rubbish pot down here I'm going to use that again another charity shop find so what I've got a combination here there's no drainage holes so I have when I did this first time I had a bit of gravel at the bottom and then my compost at the top and now I've just got a mix of gravel and compost so putting that in like that and then replanting the bulbs I've got so these ones are all they're they're white I specifically chose the white ones so when my pink hyacinths have gone over I think I'm just going to plant those straight out in the garden rather than trying to to save them so I'm trying to cover up the roots there and then my little bits and pieces here I'm going to stack them, you know, really, really pack them in. I think I was being um, a bit sparse with them before. So it, it's just, you know, a lovely, and it's just a bit leggy, isn't it? I wonder if we can just cut those bits off. So I've got a little bit of washing up, perhaps a bit of outdoor washing up to do before this stuff gets indoors lots of hairy roots so I'm going to hide those by putting a sort of top top dressing of soil on and then actually I might perhaps I could use that moss that I've got to to decorate you know to just to give it a, a nicer look so sometimes I do put gravel on the top if I've got any to hand so that's all done like that I wonder whether look can I just go like that just I just just cut a bit off don't tell so perhaps I could scrunch on some of that moss from yesteryear and if I everything I'll need watering and hopefully it will sort of rejuvenate and come back to life at the moment it looks slightly like I'm crumbling polystyrene on the top but we're, we're going for a look here. Oh, I've, got, I've had another idea as well. Let's have a go. So I'm going to water that. And, and hope that the moss sort of rejuvenates and fills out a little bit. But I've also got things like this, loads of um, spruce left over. So perhaps I could start to make this look more intentional you know enough like a sort of half-hearted display by laying a bit of the, the christmas spruce across the top and again this section here has got a pine cone on it you know it looks very christmassy but we are in that winter period christmas may well be over but it is still winter so although you can't see much many of the bulbs it, you know it looks like it's a planned a piece a work of art so i quite like that and in actual fact, I might do the same thing with some of the bulbs that I haven't tampered with. That's a dead bit. And I have got some slightly fresher bits of moss. I'm going to take out the woody bits. I'm going to sort of layer them on top. And I went to my sister's house over the Christmas period and she has got lots of overgrown Christmas trees in her garden which seem to attract this lovely lichen so the bits that had fallen on the ground I did pick up so I might put some of that lichen in there as well have I got enough moss to, to spread out or am I going to run out so I'm hoping that's what's going to happen with the other one it's going to, it's going to look a little more, more lush in due course take out that little sprig there and then for the decoration on here I've got a little bit of the lichen just adding a, a bit of a tonal difference 
So I have been using some of this lichen I've got on my candlesticks, just putting some at the base, but it does dry out indoors. It almost looks like it's coral here. So that little twig there is broken. I'm gonna, it's silver birch, I think this. I could just sort of I'll take those bits off. You know, lay that down on the top, again, to make it look slightly more intentional. Something like that, and I could even lay the pine cones on as well. What do we think about that? Whether I could just balance them, I could use my floristry wire to, to pin them in place. Out at the side, not quite sure. But I think it just gives that sense that you know it was still in the winter season. Spring is around the corner, but you know, don't don't wish it's spring straight away. Um, just take a little bit of a moment. So I've got these sort of green gardens going on. And I haven't got anything I can put as a top dressing on this one. So I might just use my leftover bits of pine. I should remember to water. Did I water those ones? Can't remember. They all in desperate need of being watered. But I can't put too much water in because I don't want um, the water to settle at the bottom and then the roots to rot off. So, you know, a little bit of twig around here, a little bit of lichen around there. It's like having a little nature tray. But when you go for a walk, and you know, as I say, I didn't pick this off the trees. It was just things that had been blown to the floor. Just you know, a little bit of reminder of my Christmas walks. I'll have a fiddle, I'll have a faddle in due course. So, oh, there's the uh, bird boxes that are being investigated. So I hope you've enjoyed that today. I, I, I feel I've made a little bit of progress, so thank you for keeping me company. So I've got a, a bag of bits, my Christmas bits, to be sorted out and put back in the loft. I've got this tiny bit of um, old sphagnum moss, which I think I'm just going to put in the compost bin now. And then with my surplus bits of um, soil. I have to ask my husband what he wants me to do with that, whether it's going to go in the compost bin or whether he's got a bag. And I've got bits that are going to go for the rubbish. I have got containers that need washing out. And then I have got, oh, one little bit of holly left now, he's in the tray. I've got an assortment of more intentional looking containers ready for my spring planted bulbs and eventually you know they'll look a little bit like that blousy and pink mm. thank goodness i bought white oh, i don't know you know with that little bit of wax i've got left perhaps i could you know find a new home for that and just slide it in as a decorative detail <laughs> check back next week and see whether it's still here well that's all for me for now thank you so much for joining me on this live video don't forget that if you want to join my Facebook group, it's a private group, so um, your friends and family can't see what you're posting there. If you're wanting to get advice on your flower arrangements or just ask the questions you think are too daft to ask. Um, so you're more than welcome to join. And I usually go into the group on a Friday at lunchtime um, to do a Facebook live and then as you know my pre-recorded videos on a monday at three o'clock so i shall say goodbye cup of tea wash my hands and just tidy up a little bit but i feel that progress has been made so if you want to make some progress in the new year and you need an accountability partner hop over to the group and we'll give you a little bit of a cheer as you strike off some of those jobs you want to do and i shall say goodbye lisa and yeah, the nail, the soap and the nails is a really, really good trick. So I shall say goodbye and catch up with you next time. <laughs>